Okay, we're going to talk some more about the difference between strong and weak acids and bases, and then this leads into acidic or basic salts. So in order to understand the salts, we have to understand the behavior of the acids first, okay? And we also use our knowledge of equilibrium reactions. So already in grade 10, we discussed this, that a strong acid displays a high percentage of ionization. Remember, acids ionize normally and bases dissociate. So a strong acid displays a high percentage of ionization and has a very high concentration of protons or hydronium ions, okay? Protons, hydronium ions, we're going to use them interchangeably. Sometimes it's more useful to say this, sometimes it's more useful to say that. But if you are now a weak acid, they don't ionize very well and they have a very low concentration of protons or hydronium ions. Okay, so if you have a look here, hydrogen chloride gas, if you mix it with water, you will get hydronium ions and chlorine ions, both in aqueous solution. So this covalent molecule has split into these two ions. So if you put um, hydrogen chloride gas in water, you will get out hydrochloric acid because the ionization is complete. This whole reaction just goes forward. None of these two want to go back to forming this covalent compound. On the other hand, if you look at ethanoic acid, also known as vinegar or acetic acid, if you mix ethanoic acid with water, okay, you will end up with some protons and some of these ethanoate ions. Sometimes Americans call this an acetate ion, but it's an ethanoate ion now, okay. But only about 2% ionizes. Over here, like 99.99% has gone into ions. But if you go and look at ethanoic acid mixed with water, what you will find is that most of the molecules are these undissociated acid mo molecules, carboxylic acids, and only a very few protons are lurking around in solution and very few ethanoate ions. So this equilibrium here, this is, a, this is like a full-on reaction. This is more like an equilibrium reaction. And the equilibrium is actually lying left. There are not a lot of products for this reaction. So only about 2% ionizes, meaning that nearly everything is the ethanoic acid molecules mixed with the water. It's not ionizing. So this is what what happens if you look at it? A strong acid produces a weak conjugate base. Remember, if you take the proton off, you're left with a conjugate base. So the strong acid gives you a weak conjugate get base and a proton. And a weak acid gives you a strong conjugate base and a proton. So this actually is very strongly a base. It likes to accept these protons and go back over here. So basically, this equilibrium lies to the right this equilibrium lies to the left. So weak acid gives you a strong conjugate base. So if you have a look here at this list of acids, remember sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, and nitric acid are some of the strongest acids. They have these conjugated base. Remember, if you take a proton off, you end up with a conjugate base. So these are very strong acids. And then as you go down the table, this is um, the proton that forms water. This is one of the, um, the first dissociation step from sulfuric acid. Here is now vinegar, okay? So this first step of the dissociation of sulfuric acid very readily wants to give you the conjugate base. Less so does the ethanoic acid. The ethanoic acid doesn't um, dissociate. Here is carbonic acid, usually obtained from, it's in acid rain and in soda water and stuff like that. Then there's the ammonium ion. Then this is the first step in um, losing the protons. You know, this is a polyprotic acid. So this is the first step in that one turning into a polyprotic acid. And at the bottom, there's water in balance with its hydroxide ion. So strong acid gives you a weak conjugate base. Weak acid gives you a strong conjugate base. Okay, so as the acid gets stronger, the base gets weaker. So then the same theory applies to bases, okay? A strong base has got a high percentage dissociation. Remember, bases are usually ionic to start with. So when you add water, they just split up or dissociate. 
and then the weak base has got a low percentage ionization or dissociation. Some bases um, will have to ionize. So dissociation ionic salts, covalent molecules ionize. So here's sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a very strong base. The moment you put sodium hydroxide solid, because remember it's an ionic salt, or an ionic solid, sorry, it, the moment you add water, it very happily goes to this aqueous sodium ion and the hydroxide ion, and these two like to be in solution. But if you get ammonia gas and you mix it with water, then this is now an equilibrium reaction to get the hydroxide ion and the ammonium ion, and this doesn't want to happen. This would rather be ammonia than ammonium hydroxide. Okay, so this equilibrium lies to the left. This equilibrium lies so far to the right, we don't actually tend to think of it as a reversible reaction. So this is how it's um, written here, the same like we can write with the acid, we can write with the base. So the strong base plus a proton, remember bases are proton acceptors, the base accepts a proton and makes you a weak conjugate acid. So the hydroxide ion, like in sodium hydroxide, is a very strong base, doesn't really want that proton to go back to water it would rather stay here. But if you have a weak base, okay, it will happily accept the proton and produces a strong conjugate acid. So this is your base and this is your strong conjugate acid, okay? A weak base, strong conjugate acid. So we're going to talk about this now when we deal with salts. Remember that a salt is if you mix um, an acid with a base and a salt is consists of a metal cation and an anion. So we're going to come back and look at the implications of these, um, whether they are a strong or a weak base in their dissociation.